One of the things I find that language teachers have to negotiate more and more now is having native speakers in their classes with non-native speakers. And in order to make this successful, you have to think about management equally as much as you would think about the content you're creating for that class. One year, um, we didn't have enough staff or enough periods in the day to offer a Spanish for Spanish speakers class, but we needed it. So uh, my principal created a class that had 13 Spanish speakers in it and 12 Spanish one students. And there was just no way to teach them the same content at the same time, it wasn't fair to the students. So uh, I essentially divided the class into two and I would teach my native speakers for 20 minutes and I would teach my Spanish one students for 20 minutes. And the way this worked was first, I had to build trust with them. I, I was just honest with them and I said, listen guys, I know this is not ideal. We have very different levels in this class and it would be great if we could meet during separate class periods, but we just can't. So I am gonna work my butt off to make sure that everybody learns as much as they can at their own level. And in return, what I need from you is I need you to really follow the directions I give you and really help each other when I am not providing direct instruction. And the rules we're gonna follow is the group that's in the room gets my undivided attention. And the group that's in the hall has to help each other. However, if the group in the hall cannot figure out something, they should not just sit there for 20 minutes uh, waiting for me to come to them. They need to send a representative into the room so that I can then pause and come out and help them because we need to make the most of our time. And that is really important. So, so step one was, de was developing trust. Step two was giving explicit directions. I mean that I put post-it notes around the hallway with the group names on them. And before I would send anyone into the hall, I would post on my board, um, okay, these people are gonna be sitting against the lockers. These people are gonna be sitting in front of Miss Smith's room. These people are gonna be sitting next to the bathroom and you must have your back to the wall. We're not laying in the middle of the hallway um, because we need to share the space with the rest of the school. So being that explicit helped them stay on task. And then they weren't uh, going into the hall, like spending all this time looking for their name or their spot because I had showed them on the board before they went out there where they had to go. Then um, I, had this large whiteboard that I put in the hall with the directions step by step. One, do this, two, do this, three, do this. And I had folders also labeled activity one, activity two, activity three for whatever handouts they needed. And where blended learning came in really handy for this is um, a lot of times when my native speaker group was in the hall, they would be reading and um, I would have created like an online quiz comprehension check for when they got to the end of the chapter. So they'd read and discuss in their group, then they'd go on their Chromebook for, you know, five minutes, complete the quiz, and they could be held accountable in that way. With my Spanish one students, um, sometimes I would give them activities on Senor Wooly to work on in the hallway. And again, the expectations were clear, you must use your headphones so we're not disrupting the other classes. I kept an extra stash of headphones in my classroom for when students said they didn't have theirs because this was really important to me that they not disrupt others.